Welcome to the Gospel Road. We are going to look at John chapter 5. It says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay multitudes of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there, he knew that he had already been there for a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, and while I am going another step before me, Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. At once the man was healed. And he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath day. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered to them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said that to you? Take up your bed and walk. Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn and there was a crowd in place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who healed him. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered that My father is working until now, and I am working. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these we will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raised the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as thy Father they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those will live. Hear, those who hear will live. For as the Father has loved himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I bear alone witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I received for this man, but... I say these things so that you may be saved. He was burning and sh a shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works of the Father have been accomplished, have, has given me to accomplish the very works I am doing, bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard from his form, you have never seen, 
and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is that they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory for the people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you to my Father. This is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? John chapter 5. Kind of creating the story, the background of the Jews and their disapproval of Jesus, their non-acceptance of Jesus, them looking to crucify him, from healing a man on the Sabbath day to saying how he's equal with God to saying he has the authority. And it was something they did not want to accept, understand, to deal with. It's interesting when you really think that through of how many people that when you look at this story, look at the allegorical content. When you are trying to talk to somebody and you are trying to give them information. And it's something that you know, it's something that you've done, it's something you've been through, you've witnessed this, you're trying to help them. You know, you're trying to teach someone how to do something. Trying to make them better. But they're not wanting to accept what you're trying to show them. They do not believe the wisdom that you have. So they are not listening. They're going to do it their own way. And it kind of is what it is. This is how a lot of life is when you look at things. I mean, with this discussion, it's talking about being saved and going to heaven. And the only way to God is through Jesus. So we have that story. That's that one that is being shared with everyone. And it's a story that I share too, but we're going to look at those and not only reminding you of that, but it's the other part was you're going through life and as you're trying to help your kids, help your friends, help your neighbors, help your coworkers. When you're trying to grow and help others to be better, to become better people, as you're even trying to be a better person, the thing is, it's not always going to be accepted. It's not always going to work, but that also doesn't mean that you turn your back on them either. You know, we've talked about this before. When you look at the bottom line of the entire Bible, it's talking about love. The Old Testament is love. God loving his chosen. When you look at the New Testament, it's about loving everyone. You know, love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. It's love. It's showing that compassion. It's giving that unconditional love. Though a person's not going to listen to you, it means that you do not want to engage them, but you still want to love them. You can still keep showing them, but you do it more reverent, more quietly. You know, you allow them to find, you're going to do it your way, And you're going to mess up. You might even lose your job. Now, the downside of that is if you've got somebody that's doing something that's unsafe, you know, again, 
This is something they're going to have to learn, and if they're going to be stubborn and pig-headed enough that they're not going to listen because they're using their free will to be a know-it-all, again, we cannot control that. Something's going to happen in their life that's going to say, no, something has to change. But all we can do is love them and show them compassion with that hope that what will need to happen in their life so they can see that change they're going to see to make that change before something terrible happens. But it doesn't always have to be that Dangerous. It could just be in a regular job. Uh, how many times have you talked to someone or how many times have you taken a job over and the person who had it before you had, they really didn't seem to know what they were doing. The paperwork was a mess. It was unorganized. It was just, it, it took you forever just to clean up what they were doing of as they say, the bill of goods that they sold, that this is what I know how to do and I can do this for you. And come to find out, no, they cannot. This is how we're dealing with life every day. This is what we're doing every day as we're having those conversations and we're trying to become better. If you really want to be better, if you're really wanting to be better at your job, talk to those that are around you. Find out what they know to help you become better, become stronger. What you can do as you're working together as a team to be better for the company. Because as that company grows, you also have that opportunity to grow. How can you put all that together to make something happen? Because sometimes that's what we have to do is make something happen. What are we doing to better ourselves that opens the door for people to maybe notice what you're doing? It's being better. I have to work on myself every day to be better. I have to have those mentors that I need to look towards to say, that is good. I need to, I need to focus on that. I need to look at that. I need to, to be better. I need to know how to form my words and be that wordsmith because that's what I do. I use my mouth. <laughs> I talk, which uses a lot of words. <laughs> By the end of the day, probably not very many left. But that's how we have to do that. And a lot of times you can be the one because you do your job so well that you become the focus of those around you because they are jealous. They're afraid that you are coming after their job, even if you're not. I know I've been there. I don't want someone else's job. I want my job. I want to be able to do what I can do. And you know, I've been in jobs and I've had the stress. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I want some of that stress back again. Not that that's happening lately, but it's happened through my career. More than once. But what is it that you're doing to better yourself, to be that person for people to come to, to ask those questions? Because you show that you know what you're talking about. So you've got Jesus with the Jews, Jesus doing all these miracles, these works, these things that he's saying that shows that he knows what he's talking about and people coming to him and asking questions. They're wanting to know more. They're wanting to be better. And then you've got the Jews going, but they're going to him. They're not coming to us. And then, of course, him going after those that are in charge going, you know better than what you're doing. Why are you doing this? Why are you treating your people this way? It's being the best that you can be and gaining the knowledge that you can. For me, that's what I always did. I listened, I watched, I observed, I took in everything that I could in my career. To learn as much as I can, to understand as much as I can, to go, you know, if I did that, I can do this. Ooh, what could I create if I did this and put this together? That's how I've done things. Has it helped me? No. I know a lot of stuff now. But in a way it has. Because it's opened up my mind to the changes of things. You know, most things being done on a computer. 
being able to put together programs and other things on a computer. Now, there's certain things on a computer I have no idea. I'm not one that can, you know, get around a lot of stuff. But there are certain areas I go, well, you know, if I did this and I did this, I can create this. Oh, so you're wanting to make a podcast. I can help you with that. Because with what I know, this is how we can put that together. So taking the philosophy that I've had with what I've learned with computers and the production programs for audio editing and putting that together, you want to sound like this and then we have the finished product right here. So then I can help somebody do that. I can help them be better. I can help them share the knowledge that they have with others. I can help them build others up, which is, again, what it is that we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be loving each other, building up one another, lifting up one another, encouraging one another, helping people to get out of the area that they're in to go to that next level, to be stronger, to be happier, to be better, to do better, to be a better mom, dad, uncle, grandpa, grandma, brother, sister friend, co-worker. You want your life to be better and all aspects of your life to be better, which is growing yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, and even financially. That's a fourth piece that a lot of times we don't think about. But it's learning how. It's not always where I'm going to get the money from, but it's learning how to take what you have and to grow that and to use what you have. And be stronger. Taking care of yourself and making yourself healthy. 365, 360 degrees, your entire body. Everything that you deal with, making it healthy. So you can be a better person to help others and help them be better. John, chapter 5. That is what we looked at today. So read that. See what it is that it is speaking to you and telling you to do for yourself. How to be better, how to help others be better. Again, remember, you're not always going to be accepted. Your knowledge, your words, not always going to have open doors. But that's okay. Again, we have a free will. Will We all have our own mind and we're individuals and we think for ourselves. Some people understand that. Some people just want to use that to control others. And some people just want to be pig-headed and just do not want to listen. They do not want to understand. And others want to be brown nosers. <laughs> There's many paths that we can take. You have to choose the way that you want to go. You have to choose the way that's going to be best for you. And not only is it going to be best for you, but it's going to be best for those around you. Because as you're growing, you're wanting others to grow too. Thank you. For listening to the Gospel Road, John 5 is what you want to read this week. Have a great day. God bless.